Amid the controversy trailing the planned purchase of foreign luxury vehicles by federal lawmakers, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Services, Sunday Karimi, says Assembly members deserve it, while insisting it has to be supplied by foreign car brand. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. We sincerely apologize for beginning a little bit late. Uh, well, we have so many things to discuss this morning, but first of all, having said good morning to you and uh, reminding you that this is a Thursday and Thursday we think business in uh, so many quarters. We may not be bringing you a topic directly dealing with business, but we'd like to remind you that you need to know how to do a little bit of business, not necessarily that which will take you from what you're doing right now, because there's so many things that you can do with just a click of the button of a computer or your phone. So there are so many things that if you don't know how to do, you need to learn at this moment. Technology has given us the opportunity to um, have streams of incomes and to also have fun while doing a lot of things that we usually like to do. So uh, get up there, uh, try to do something, try your hands at something. There's so many other things that are selling apart from the thing that you're doing right now. So if you are someone who is a teacher, for instance, and you have one or two hours, there are things that you can do as well. You can do uh, some sales on the internet that you don't even need to leave the comforts of your house to do that. So, so many things that you can do to put money in your pocket and food on your table. That's the basic thing that we need. We need um, the basic things of life are just uh, food, shelter, and clothing. These are the three things that we need. Every other thing is just, um, uh, I don't know how to call it, it's, it's just not necessities, but just things that we want. Uh, the things that we really need is to be able to feed ourselves, to be able to find shelter and uh, put our heads, you know, when we want to rest and then to clothe ourselves. And if you can have these basic things, then you know that you're a complete person. Every other thing is just luxury that you want for yourself. And uh, they are really ephemeral things that may not even last for long. But what I'm saying is that you don't need to complain because there are so many opportunities out there. And if you can't find them, uh, sometimes we help you find them. So if you need help, <laughs> let us know. Well, uh, for today, before we go into our top trending, we'll just take a short break and we'll be back in a jiffy. Don't go away. You're welcome back. Um, we usually bring you some of the things that caught our attention in the course of 24 hours. One of the biggest stories this morning uh, on top trending and possibly all the newspapers that will carry is that the Supreme Court is scheduled to render its judgment today, Thursday, October 26, 2023, in the cases of LP and OB, Atiku and PDP versus INEC. But okay, uh, Bola Metinubu, Shatima, and APC. Recall that the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, and the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, have lodged appeals challenging the ruling of the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal, PEPT. The Supreme Court on Monday, October 23, had its hearing into the appeals filed by the PDP presidential candidate and his LP counterpart challenging the ruling of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, PEPT, that upheld Tinubu's electoral victory. The judgment date was confirmed by all parties involved. Next is that uh, the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has approved the appointment of nine new resident electoral commissioners, Rex, for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for a term of five years each. A statement released by presidential media aider during Gilali says President Buhari made the appointments by powers vested in him by Section 154, subsection 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 amended, and Section 6 of the Electoral Act 2022 to make such appointments. He gave names of the nominated commissioners as Isa Shaka Ehimek 
Himi Akne, Edo State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Bamidele Agbede, Ekiti State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Jani Adamu Bello, Gombe State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Dr. Tae Ileyasu, Kwara State, Dr. Bumi Omoshe Yendemi, Lagos State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Alhaji Yaya Bello, Nasarawa State, Rec, Professor Mohamed Yalwa, Niger State, Rec, Dr. Anubum Onoha, River State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Abubakar Fawadambo, Zamfara State. He added that President Tinubu expects the new appointees to abide by the highest standards of professional and ethical conduct in the discharge of their duties in accordance with his determination to facilitate the establishment of a new and sustainable standard of transparent, fair and conflict-free electoral conduct in Nigeria. Also, the state chapters of the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress have expressed displeasure at the slow pace of implementing the Memorandum of Understanding it signed with the federal government to avert its planned nationwide strike. The organized labor warned that failure to implement the agreement before the October 30 deadline might leave them with no choice but to go on strike, adding that they had commenced mobilization of their members across the country. Now, on Tuesday, they were asked, uh, Tuesday, October 24, whether Labour was satisfied with the implementation of the MOU. The Head of Information and Public Affairs of the NLC, Benson Upa, said the government could do better and faster, and that Labour issued a statement a few days ago in expressing and expressing pleasure, or displeasure rather, with the Minister of Labour and Employment. The national leadership of the NLC and TUC had on October 1 reached an agreement with the federal government to pay 35,000 naira to all federal workers beginning from September, pending when a new national minimum wage would be signed into law. The resolution provided that the wage award would be paid to the federal workers for six months while states were encouraged to extend the same benefit to their own workers. This is what they are afraid the federal government is about to renege upon. Now, meanwhile, Nigeria's Minister of Health, Professor Ali Pate, has outlined the need for women to be vaccinated against the human papilloma virus, papilloma virus and countering claims against the HPV vaccine on Wednesday, October 25, after a visit to the Kuchingoro Primary Health Care Center in the company of the director of Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation, Professor Senaid Faseha, Pate disclosed that his four daughters are vaccinated. So there's no fear in the vaccination, no controversy whatsoever. Uh, he stated that the vaccine is safe for girls and it would serve as lifelong prevention against the disease. He said, uh, the focus is to make the, this voluntarily, or to make this vaccine uh, get to the people and for them to get it voluntarily. And there are not enough vaccines and those who choose not to receive are making a mistake of, for their children because they're exposing them to the risk of having those diseases. Remember, we have done a few programs on this vaccine. We hope people will take advantage of this and not have to cry tomorrow um, because it prevents you from having the um, kind of disease that um, ordinarily you would have. I think cervical cancer or that. So if you are supposed to or you are in the age bracket that you are supposed to get this vaccine please do uh, find time to go and get it and if it's for your child make sure that your child gets it probably from nine years to uh, 25 or 30 or something uh, you fall under that age bracket that you need to get this vaccine so find out the age bracket and if you do fall under this age bracket try to get the vaccine it's free and if you miss it now, because it's not so much available, um, there are limited number of these vaccines that can be given to people. So if you miss it now, you might be missing it uh, for this lifetime, and that will not be good enough tomorrow. Uh, also, a former militant leader, Asari Dokubo, has lamented over President Bola Tinubu's recent appointments. Um, Asari said this while reacting to controversial Islamic cleric Sheikh Gumi's call for Nyesom Wike to be removed as FCT minister. 
Addressing this in a video which has gone viral, the former militant leader stated that Abuja was built with oil money from non-northern regions, and he also said that it was built on the premise of no man's land. He went on to lament about other appointments by President Bola Tinubu, claiming that it is one-sided and makes Lagos look like the only state in the country. Asari, who claimed that he campaigned for Tinubu because of his past uh, achievements or did not really like the fact that these appointments have been made. Remember that in the past, uh, Sari Dokubo um, had really been uh, the vanguard talking for the president. And remember the other time he was saying that nobody dares to oppose the president. Now, uh, he also even uh, talked about the fact that uh, when people try to claim that Lagos State is um, in no man's land, it is actually a Yoruba land and it should not be claimed by anybody. And now Sheikh Gumi said that uh, Wike shouldn't be or shouldn't have been the minister of the FCT because of maybe his religion or maybe where he comes from. And though the Northern elders have disowned War, uh, Gumi, uh, you know, regarding the statement that she made, not, he made rather, uh, not that he is no longer a northerner, but they said they distanced themselves from uh, what Gumi said because it is not a general opinion of everybody. So now Asari Dukubo is saying that um, uh, Abuja is supposed to be a no man's land, just like some people were calling Lagos a no man's land because it used to be the uh, federal capital. Uh, for Nigeria and everybody was welcomed in Lagos and now Asari Dokubo is saying Abuja is supposed to be a no man's land that is why it was built yes every um, every uh, federal government or uh, every capital of a country is supposed to be like a no man's land if you know what that means uh, so you know he's not very happy and he's saying that most of the appointments are coming from Lagos or Yoruba land, uh, because I'm not sure all the people that were appointed are coming from Lagos. They may be Yoruba people, they may be people who have worked in Lagos, but hey, Lagos welcomes a lot of people uh, coming from other parts of Yoruba land, or other parts of the country, so uh, Sari is not comfortable about that. Maybe he wanted an appointment as well, or more appointment to his people or for his people. But whatever it is, he has cried out that he does not like what is happening right now regarding the appointments well i've seen appointments coming from the southeast from the south south from the southwest from from the north east west and everywhere um, maybe he just has a particular appointments that he felt that shouldn't have gone to particular um, axes of the country whatever is his arguments are well let's wait and see what uh, the people so appointed will do because what we look for in Nigeria or what we should be looking for in Nigeria is actually competence uh, but how far can we take that competence when we find that there's also a constitutional provision for um, um, what do they call it now for everybody to be carried along there's that provision like that federal character they call it yeah federal character that's what the name that they give to it so if any ethnic group or any geopolitical zone perceives that they are being left out, then that provision will be invoked by whoever wants to uh, bring up an argument. But well, that's what Atari Dokubo has said, and if there is anything to go by, then whoever is in charge of appointing whoever should take note that some people are watching. But some people will just laugh over it and say, well, uh, this is what we saw and this is what you get. But we have absolute trust in whoever is at the helm of affairs, that he knows what he is doing. And if tomorrow we wake up to find out that the dollar is one, one naira to one dollar, we wouldn't care wherever the um, people who are in charge of the economy uh, are from. We will just be happy that the dollar and the naira are the same. Uh, right now, something, a country like Kenya, Kenyan shilling, one Kenyan shilling is 509 naira. So it is bigger and stronger than the naira. And I felt it was a shame when I discovered that. And for the fact that we've been told that Nigeria and Angola currencies are the worst performing currencies in Africa right now, it really is a shame for all of us. So we don't care where anybody comes from, but let's see 
uh, that in the next maybe two months before Christmas, we'll start seeing things happening. I just spoke to a friend last night and the friend was telling me that this friend is uh, a, a businessman who sells a lot of things and then he was telling me that the prices of things have gone up almost double within two weeks and it is not even close to Christmas yet. Well, it is close, but uh, it's still up to almost 60 days away and things are happening like this. What if it enters November? What if it enters December? Can we still uh, be proud of uh, a, a chicken lap on our plate or something? We don't know. We just want Nigeria to work. Wherever, whoever is coming from will not matter if at the end of the day, we turn around the economy, we turn around the, um, the, the fortunes of Nigeria and Nigerians, and then we begin to see the Nigeria that was proud enough to call itself the giant of Africa. Well, we'll take a short break from here, and then when we return, we hope to be joined by our analysts that will be helping us look at the papers and talk more on the uh, headlines on the front pages. Stay with us.